Now, in June, the Toronto Raptors made NBA history by winning Game 6 of the finals, marking the first time a Canadian team had won the championship, and they beat the Golden State Warriors 114-110 to at the Oracle Arena in Oakland, California. Uh, Cowie Leonard was named the finals MVP, and since the beginning of the 2018-19 season, Raptors president Masai Ujiri set the lofty goal of securing the top NBA title. Uh, the team acquired Leonard from the San Antonio Spurs, along with Danny Green in exchange for DeMar uh, DeRozan. Uh, Mark Gasol was later added to the roster at the trade deadline in February. So Masai Ujiri is actually in the studio here. Uh, first of all, welcome to Kenya. You do come here quite a lot. Uh, you've got a Kenyan connection. Uh, just tell us about that Kenyan connection. Uh, my mom is Kenyan uh, from Machakos. Uh, and uh, my parents met in, uh, in England very many years ago. And we moved, my dad is Nigerian and moved back to Nigeria and I grew up in Nigeria. But uh, my mom is Kenya, so strong roots here. Unbelievable. How did you end up in the States or uh, in Canada even? Uh, I, w I, went, uh, I went to a uh, prep school uh, in, uh, in the States. I went to junior college and then college. Uh, and that's how I ended up uh, there playing ball. Uh, went, to, um, went on to play professional uh, basketball. Uh, wasn't very good, but um, I managed a small career in Europe. And uh, from then on, I, started, I decided I, it wasn't, wasn't for me. I wasn't good enough and uh, tried to get into coaching and then uh, I landed a, a scouting job uh, at the time. It's quite a meteoric rise. Uh, how did you end up in management? Uh, so when I became a scout, uh, I started as an unpaid scout with the Orlando Magic and uh, slowly started to scout around Africa. And I was made the international scout for the Denver Nuggets at the time. And uh, just traveling the, around the world, searching for talent. Uh, um, luckily for me, I've been blessed uh, with the organizations that I've been where I've been uh, promoted, um, hopefully on merit, and uh, just continue to be curious, you know, about uh, what it takes to run a basketball team in the NBA and what it takes to put a team together. And um, I got the opportunity to do that in, with the uh, Denver Nuggets and then moved to Toronto as director of uh, global scouting and uh, assistant GM eventually. Uh, and then I got a lucky break in 2010 uh, where I became the GM of the general manager of the Denver, the Denver Nuggets. I did that for three years and um, got the president's job with the Toronto Raptors and that's where I find myself today. Now, it is quite famous uh, that you needed to do some changes. Uh, you set that goal uh, that you wanted to win uh, the 2019 uh, title. Just tell us about some of the changes you made to the team. Uh, well, we had done kind of the same thing. We're a very good team uh, in the NBA, uh, uh, probably a top uh, five, six team in the NBA for a few years there. And um, what's big in the NBA is how do you make that jump? You know, how do you go from good to great or from good to a uh, championship team and um, we had done it for so long we, we felt that we needed to do uh, some things different and that's when we made the trade for Kawhi Leonard and we also let go of our coach uh, Dwayne Casey and, and hired um, Nick Nurse and, uh, and then later on that year we still had to make a couple more moves and um, we made the trade for Marc Gasol which uh, ended up being I think instrumental in pushing for the title at the end but um, some of those decisions are very difficult decisions to make because you get close to your coach, you get close to these players and DeMar DeRozan and uh, Dwayne Casey were very, very meaningful uh, for our growth uh, with the Toronto Raptors but uh, it came a time when we had to um, really make a push. Now, of course, uh, this project, the Giants of Africa, the NBA in Africa, uh, j just tell us about this. And of course, uh, with your Kenyan heritage, uh, it must be quite heartbreaking uh, for Kenya to not be part of this project uh, in terms of hosting matches. Uh, well, Giants of Africa um, One is a foundation uh, I started, we started um, uh, 15 years ago where I wanted to bring basketball camps, clinics um, to uh, to Africa and I started in Nigeria and then started to spread around uh, all over uh, the continent and all we want to do is um, just like I had a path that was created an opportunity that was created for me um, we want to tell that story we want to create that path 
uh, for kids through sports and education. And, and so we travel around uh, the countries uh, in August when, um, well, when we have a little bit of free time. Uh, this year we've been, we started in Senegal with basketball without borders, but we've been in Morocco, we've been in Mali, uh, we've been in Cameroon, and uh, we came here, we went to the Mullies um, Children's uh, Foundation, and uh, today we're at Mathari, and uh, we're off to Somalia, and uh, Tanzania, and South Sudan. Um, it's a marathon, but um, if we're in position um, uh, like the one I have, I grew up in Africa, and we have to give back. I think we have to give these kids uh, an opportunity uh, because we have so much talent on the continent uh, and uh, so many smart kids. Um, we have to teach them that through sports, I think they can build uh, and grow. And if sports doesn't work out, they can also be like us. They can be sports ex executives or sports journalists or whatever it is. Uh, but we have to tell them that they have this opportunity uh, as young as they are. Yeah, of course, I was mentioning uh, there is this league now that's going to be starting as well. Uh, with the Kenyan heritage, uh, is there anything you can bring back uh, in terms of developing the facilities? Because uh, you're off to Rwanda uh, after this, and uh, we've seen this impressive arena uh, put up very, very quickly by President Kagame. It must be quite heartbreaking to see the facilities not up to scratch here. Well, I think um, uh, Kenyatta, uh, President Kenyatta was in our first meeting in, in New York um, with, with President Kagame and, and everybody. And I think um, there, there is excitement and we just have to push it and, and kind of show the way in, in which it's built. And um, President Kagame pushed and this arena was built. Maki Sali has pushed in Senegal and it's been built. We need this for this league and we need Kenya to be part of this league uh, because uh, Kenya is a huge part of, uh, I, th I think is a huge part of Africa in terms of sports, in terms of business, in terms of culture. Um, everything is symbolic uh, in, uh, in the eastern part of Africa, but in Africa in general. And um, to have that, uh, the league uh, be here too, I think is going to be very significant. But it will come, you know, we'll, we'll push it as much as we can, help as much as we can. But what we're trying to tell everybody that is that this has to happen. We have to make progress in sports on the continent, and it starts with big countries uh, like Kenya. Uh, tell us a bit about your family here. Uh, on your mother's side, uh, do you meet up with them much? Uh, can you speak any of the dialect? Well, we know that uh, you, you do speak uh, some of the Nigerian dialect, uh, yes. dialect as well. Do you speak any Nkamba here or anything? I understand a little bit of Swahili. I will meet with um, a couple of my cousins. Uh, I, can't, I can't go to Machakos on this trip, but I have been back uh, a couple of times that when I come back. Any Swahili words you know? Uh, Habari. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just Asante back, <laughs> for having me. <laughs> uh, just back to the Toronto Raptors, uh, how massive of an achievement was that for Canadians? We saw, you know, the thousands and thousands of people at the reception. Of course, that hashtag, We the North, uh, mm -hmm. you know, trending all over the world. Uh, just how monstrous was this achievement uh, for Canada? It was huge, um, huge. For the NBA, to have the only team... Uh, in the NBA that's outside the United States, I think it signifies uh, that we're a global team and we have to push that. I think it was huge for, uh, for Africa as well to have those two, three African players on our team with Pascal and Serge uh, Ibaka and OG Ananobi. Um, and um, I, for me, um, the moment were, uh, when, when we won the championships, the first thing that came into my mind outside of seeing my family was um, we won a championship for Africa. Um, it, it was very big for me. And uh, to see that parade in Canada and how um, people responded, um, it shows that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter um, what your background is. You can win. You can win in sports. And sports is about winning. And that's what we wanted to prove in Canada. And we'll continue to do so. Uh, just finally, uh, we saw the Kenya Marans, uh, the, the men's team, uh, make it to the final of the AfroBasket uh, tournament as well. Mm -hmm. um, what are the chances, uh, first of all, your thoughts on Kenyan basketball, and then what are the chances do you see uh, in the foreseeable future of any Kenyan making it uh, you know, right up uh, to NBA level? 
You know, the one thing I, lo I love about this country is the youth basketball. Basketball played in secondary schools. It's one of the most organized, and I think it's underrated around the continent. Uh, people don't know how much it's organized uh, here. We have to use that momentum because we don't have anything after that. Yeah, so um, while looking to get kids to start playing at a younger age, younger than um, they usually do in basketball, because in soccer, once you start get out of your mom's womb, you start playing soccer. Um, we want to build more facilities and have more infrastructure for the, these young basketball players. And um, for us in Kenya, the growth is after high school. Where are our leagues? You know, like where are our coaches? Where are the facilities? Um, that's why we go into uh, some of these tough neighborhoods where um, you find a lot of talented kids that play all day and um, we have to build uh, that confidence for them and that path for them to become successful. So I see a lot of growth here uh, in basketball. Um, we that have the voices, we that have maybe a little bit of influence need to come and push more and we will try to push more but we also encourage coaches here and administration here uh, to do more. Thank you so much for joining us on NTV. And of course, uh, we will be hearing more from you on Top Sport, uh, our show on Saturday. But thank you so much. Uh, by the way, half Nigerian, half Kenyan, Asai Ujiri, the president of the Toronto Raptors, the 2019 NBA champions. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. Uh. Thank you.